Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and on a previous episode, you saw me upgrade the lighting in my one room. Now, you're gonna see me take it to the next level, because I'm gonna be setting it up with a LED conversion kit. So this is the toggled LED daylight conversion kit. I got it from Home Depot. It's only about 40 bucks in, in tax here in Canada. And well, it's 5,000 K daylight and it's gonna allow me to pull that ballast out and just have a straight LED light fixture, which is a, an interesting thing. And it comes with all the bells and whistles. It comes with these two triangular shaped bulbs and replacement sockets. That's right. You don't even really have to worry about cutting wires. You can just pop the existing sockets right out, pop these new ones in. I was surprised to find out it even came with little pieces of wires attached and ready to go. I thought I was gonna have to rig up some of my own wiring, but no, it's copper wiring of the correct size and shape that I need. So this should go together very easily. Now, if you're not familiar what's going on here is fluorescent light fixtures, they have this ballast in them. Those fluorescent light bulbs, they can't run off direct 120 volts. They need a starter circuit of sorts, something that's gonna kinda excite the gases. You know, those are arc bulbs. They have what's essentially controlled lightning going from one end to the other, and it's the gases in there that allow that to happen. Now, because there's no filament, you can't just stick power on them. They have this kind of starter circuit that kind of I'm not sure how to explain how the starter circuit does, but it has to start the process that ignites that flame, if you will. And then once that's happening, then it can continue running on mostly AC current, except there is bias in there. It can't quite handle the 60 Hertz. There's usually some sort of choke coil, which smooths it out so it's more consistent. And it also biases the current, uh, regulates it, if you will, so that it consumes the right amount of current. Now, back in the old days, it was a bit of a mechanical process, but now with modern electronic ballasts, well, Fluorescent light fixtures have gotten pretty good and debatably up until recently, I would have told you that a fluorescent light fixture has the best quality of light you can get. Now I know what you're thinking, your office building gives you a headache. Well, no, not the whatever cool white bulbs. If you get daylight bulbs with a nice high CRI, color temperature about 5,000 K, that's, that's nice lighting. You can grow plants under that lighting. That is the closest you come to simulating the kind of lighting that gives you that vitamin D boost, you know? It's good lighting to have if you're one of those people who never gets out. In the meantime, it's great for filming because it's a very balanced, pure white light that cameras, they, they like just fine. So, here's the light fixture in question. We pretty much just gotta start gutting this thing. Get the old bulbs out. I think these old bulbs are somewhat worn to begin with. Obviously, it's unplugged. I've had this apart for cleaning and service before. Hopefully there's no surprises. Ha. This is the party in question. That is your ballast. That is what makes this chooch, what makes it work. It does all the regulation and starting facilities for these bulbs, but we're not gonna need that anymore. Now, I don't wanna waste this thing because as far as ballasts go, it's one of the better ones. This light fixture isn't that old. This is one of the modern electronic ballasts. And if you have an old fluorescent light fixture, you should, at the very least, be upgrading it to a ballast of this type because it adds to the energy efficiency. Now, this conversion is real easy because all we gotta do is pop the old, like these things just slide in and out of there, right? And fortunately, they're the same size. You have to watch out because some light fixtures have these of different lengths, right? They're slightly shorter ones, they're slightly longer ones. You're gonna have to use your judgment. Some you can get away with changing the length of these, some you don't. If you have to reuse these, it's not a big deal because they just have these little slip connectors. You see they have two holes and you just kinda slip something over top of the wire like so, assuming it's not super tight. Sometimes it requires a little finagling. A little bit of twisting and pulling. Now, you might damage the little push connector a little bit when you do that, but you know, fortunately there's two holes and the other one should still be fresh. But you don't have to worry about that. You just need a little wrench thing to go into there. Five sixteenths. 
I'll save this ballast for some other form of conversion that I might do. And this little guy gets committed to the hardware department. And now it's gonna lift and tilt and look at all that. Look at all that, that's, that's done. Now on the far end, we can just go ahead and slip these in there. We don't have to connect wires or anything to them. Just, just schlep them on in there. And here, now you gotta mind the polarity. We got a couple things going on here. This is a, a three prong grounded. Now obviously black to black, white to white if it's a fixed light fixture that's permanently uh, installed into your ceiling. Otherwise you have to do a little bit of reading between the lines if it's not. Now on these wires, you often notice one has bumps on it or ridges and the other side is smooth, typically. Typically, the bumpy side will be the neutral and the smooth side will be the hot. So the bumpy side will be the white wire, the smooth side will be the black wire. Just, you know, obviously you're taking it apart. Pay attention what color code goes to what because there is a chance that it could be backwards. I've seen it happen before, but typically it's smooth, black, bumpy, white. Now these guys, well, they're just gonna go in here. All you have to do to make these bulbs work is get 120 volts to one end, right? Here they're set up for you, so you don't really have to worry about which one's black and which one's white, and it probably doesn't matter if you're going from scratch. However, you're gonna wanna jumper these together. So you bring your guys around like that. Now remember how I said they were push connectors? Just push the white in the second hole, push the black in the second hole. Just like that. And now they're jumpered together. Both bulbs are gonna work together. Now, normally, all you have to do is connect these guys to these guys. That's it. In fact, let's simulate it. Again, white to bumpy. They even come with the morets you need. Black to smooth. Then finally, they have plastic covers on the ends. You can take those out. Now, I'm not putting this together right just yet. I'm gonna pop these in there and give her a quick testing. You're gonna notice one end says AC input, right? And the other end is plain. <laughs> ah, would you look at that? And that color is nice and they're kinda flexible too, which means they won't accidentally get instantly smashed if I swing my hand up or something. While I'm at it, I'm going to take this to the next level because I have it under good authority that these are dimmable. Oh, oh. A ah, little bit sketch with this dimmer, but then this is an old dimmer not necessarily rated for LED lights. Looks like it wants to work though. I need to proof of concept this. I went to the old, uh, the old uh, universal tire corner store there. You know what I'm talking about. Got this universal rotary dimmer. So I am going to um, reach in here. I'm going to disconnect the hot. This is output from dimmer right here. Spin that on. And then to hot, I'm going to connect the input for dimmer. This one was closest in reach. Wire nuts if you're in the States. Now let's see here how well this dimmer is going to work because this one's LED rated. Ah, much better. This, this is good news, yes? This is the good of news. I have a bit of hunch here. Oh yeah, I have a bit of a, I have a bit of an idea. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pull these circuits up so I can get a flat bare chassis to work with. 7.6. Get this out of there. Oh yeah, we sure about that? Measure twice. Good old mild steel. All right, in Lake Flynn, man. The cover should be bond ground bonded. Continuity check, yes, yes. Indeed it is. That means that this whole assembly is gonna get ground bonded once I bolt it to the chassis. And I'm not gonna really need to worry about connecting this ground wire. Plus, 
this entire assembly is living inside the chassis. So, there's my holes. Give her. Look how perfect that worked out. All right, two holes even lined up, so I already had a pilot and then that one was just in the right space to begin with. So, now, let's get our wiring harness back into place. Now, when doing morettes, it's nothing fancy. Don't pre-twist them. The morette's gonna do that for you. Just put the two wires together and then put the morette or wire nut over top and start turning. Eventually, it's gonna hit terminal twistiness. And don't twist them too hard. They'll often, especially with these smaller wires, you'll just end up ripping the wire. Dimmer input to the hot. And they gave you extra light bulb to the red. I just guess I don't put, take that off if you're not using three-way, it has three-way Eh, whatever, I'll throw that over there, cap that off to make it official. Tuck her all in there. Eh, don't forget to put these back on the other end. Wait, I forgot something. I'm not done yet. Uh, champa and de ba, champa and de ba. We will not impress her unless we champa and de ba. I'm putting these hooks on here. And I'm gonna put the other one on the other side and I'm not gonna bother setting up that shot. All right, now we're done and ready to button her up. Oh, let's just slide it into place. Oh, okay, I need these to go down a notch. There are multiple steps on these things. And it looks like they have to be underneath the click part of the step. There we go. All right, where's the screws? All right, let's put in the crystals. Remember, AC side towards the AC side. Now our installation is complete. Complete with dimmer control built in. Now, we shall plug it in. And if everything goes according to plan, rah, let's just stick that knob on there. Oh yeah, bud. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, bud. Now, the keen observer might be questioning, but sir, why did you put those hooks on the side? Well, that is a good question, Mr. Keen Observer. You see, this is the assembly that holds it up. We have this hook here, and the hook's there. Now, the idea is with the hooks, I can hang the chain under there and offset its position. So now, it's gonna hang face outwards, right? I've added some pitch to this. That'll be allowing me, in fact, I might be able to go all the way and hang it pretty much sideways like that. That's why I added the hooks. This is gonna give me some range of adjustability. So instead of just aiming directly down, I can actually face it towards the filming location. The only problem that I was having with this light hanging up was it blasting everywhere, was causing ghosting in the lenses. So I wanna face it away from the camera and towards what I wanna light up. And then, bam. I can dial in a fine tune if I want to. Well, let's go intimidate it. There is one last final step which must be observed. In fact, I'm surprised they don't give you these with the kit because it's a safety issue. Touches like this separate the true professionals from the amateurs because after all, we can't just go putting normal fluorescent bulbs in here. This is my personal apparatus, but say you do this conversion to uh, your apartment and then the next guy that moves in, the bulb dies and they go to replace it, well, now, future generations will know how to handle this. All right, now, let's get this hung up. All right, now, we can use our hook, just like that. 
All right, how do I look? It's nice, it's throwing this way now. It's lighting up the scene. Shadows aren't too harsh, decent, decent diffusion. Is the dimmer even up all the way? Oh boy, it wasn't even at max. Now we're friggin' lit. Nice. You know what? I need more light fixtures set up like that to, cause they would be excellent for lighting up the background. Look at that. That's the kind of party we're dealing with here. Now it hangs sideways and beams light right onto the scene. And my light value is giving me f2.8, which is what the lens is rated for at only 250 ISO. So like that, that, this, this guy is giving me some serious LV, some serious LV. Wow. Things just keep getting better. Momentum. It's great.